Aquaba, welcome to my channel. My name is AC Kokui and this is What's the Wahala AC, where we discuss all the Wahala from the week. The Oscars was this past weekend. The CDC made some big announcements. My nails, don't look at them. Mm -mm. But we got a lot of Wahala to discuss, so let's get to it. It's gonna be a longer episode today because I'm going to be doing an Oscars edition of like best dress, worst dress. So let's get to it. Now it's time for the big three. Ooh, Cause we the big three, don't need a big speech. We made the biggest impact, check the spreadsheet. So the Oscars was this Sunday. It wasn't, you know, a virtual event. It was actually in person. Um, they had their main place that they were doing the Oscars and then different locations for the different nominees. And so that was cool to see um, it actually be in person. We're slowly getting back into the whole award show lifestyle. It's my favorite, it's my favorite season. You know, the Oscars isn't my favorite, but I, I was still kind of here for it. I watched it on and off as I was watching Teen Wolf. Okay. Don't ask why. Anyway, <laughs> so Daniel Kaluuya won actor in a supporting role for his role in Judas and the Black Messiah. That was great. Congratulations to him. Even though his mom wasn't so happy when he thanked her for having sex with his dad to create him. Um, that was like the best part of the night. The singer, her, she won original song for her song, Fight For You, in Judas and the Black Messiah. So congratulations to her for her first Oscar, slowly getting her to EGOT status. That's crazy. The Disney movie Soul won for animated feature film and congratulations to that film because it is so good. I love it. I know a lot of people were trying to say it was too deep for a Disney movie, but if you watch and if you really know Disney movies, they're always deep. Toy Story has some very deep moments. So it was good, it was great, and I'm glad that it won for animated feature film. And Soul won for original score. Ma Rainey's Black Bottom won for its makeup and hairstyling and for costume design. Congratulations to them. I really wish Viola Davis won. But I also wish, you know, at the end of the whole award show, Chadwick Boseman would have won for his role in that film. So, um, yeah, I, I definitely think that he was robbed of that. Um, doesn't matter if he's passed, I, I definitely think that he should have won for that. So yeah, that was the worst part of the Oscars, but just a little bit later, we're gonna talk about the outfits, what everybody was wearing and kind of rate them. But we'll get to that a little later. So the CDC made an announcement yesterday. I was just on Instagram scrolling through when people were talking about this and I was like, okay, what's going on? But yes, they said that fully vaccinated people do not have to wear a mask. Now, that is all <laughs> that I saw, but I'm like, there definitely has to be some restrictions with that. So I'm gonna read this to you so you fully know the extent of what you can do just so you're not you're still being safe because we still need to wear a mask y'all if you have been fully vaccinated you can gather indoors with fully vaccinated people without wearing a mask or staying six feet apart you can gather indoors with unvaccinated people of any age from one other household without mask or staying six feet apart unless any of those people or anyone they live with has an increased risk for severe illness firm from COVID-19. You can gather or conduct activities outdoors without wearing a mask except in certain crowded settings and venues. If you travel in the United States, you do not need to get tested before or after travel or self-quarantine after travel. And what you should keep doing, even if you've been fully vaccinated, is you still should wear a mask in indoor public settings, gathering, um, indoors with unvaccinated people, including children from more than one or other household, visiting indoors with an unvaccinated person who is at risk. You should still avoid indoor large gatherings. You know, if you go to the grocery store, you should still wear a mask. Outdoor gatherings, all that stuff, you should still wear a mask. It's just mostly like when you wanna go for a walk and you're by yourself or whatever, you don't have to wear a mask. Or, you know, if you are gathering with a couple of friends um, and you guys have fully been vaccinated then that is the safest 
solution for you if you want to do that. So just be careful. There are still some guidelines around it. I know people are going to, I mean, a lot of people still haven't been following guidelines, but if you are still trying to be safe, just do what you possibly can. Read the cdc.gov website. Um, that's where I got all my information from. And just still take care. You know, we're slowly coming out of this pandemic, but there are still precautions that you should be taking. We should all be taking so we can finally like get back to some sense of normalcy. So a resurfaced clip um, from a 2010 interview with Steve Harvey came back up and it's definitely going viral. In that interview, Steve Harvey said that men and women cannot have platonic relationships. They can't just be friends, you know, there's just a little too, there's too much behind it. Yeah, there was definitely backlash from that. People disagreed. Some people agreed with him and was like, yeah, man, you're right, you know? But others were like, no, I have guy friends and we're, we're strictly friends, you know? Or I have girlfriends and we're strictly friends. So I have friends that I don't even see in that way and it's chill, like, no, you, you're wrong. And, I want to see actually what you guys say so comment down below and tell me how you feel about that top you feel like men or women can stay in platonic relationships like that or do you feel like there's always going to be something you know with me I definitely I definitely see both sides to that um, I'm not going to like things like that it, it's just like there's not really a definite answer for me it's everybody has their own experience what works for steve harvey works for him and if he doesn't have any friends that are girls that is what works for him sometimes that though can be rooted in misogyny and then also like you can't control yourself around other women like that you can't handle having a, a friend that's <laughs> that is of another sex in your life like that that's where my mind goes to but it's honestly none of my business for me i definitely think that i can have friends um that are of the other sex and not have any feelings for um i've done it but i've also had friends where it's the blur the lines got blurred as well and it happens but i definitely feel like i can have both I can have both. I've had friends that nothing has happened to, and I've had friends where things have happened, and that's just life. But I do think that you can have a strictly platonic relationship. Just depends on the person, depends on where they are in life, depends on their mindset. So like I said, let me know down below how you actually feel about it. It is now time for our 60 second wrap up. Let's get to it. Kehlani came out last week and she now identifies as a lesbian. So congratulations to her. Don't miss her too much, but Megan Thee Stallion is going on a small hiatus to prepare for Hot Girl Summer and all the music, all the looks, everything that she's about to bring, and we know she's about to bring it. Caitlyn Jenner is officially running for governor of California. This past weekend, DMX was celebrated at his two-day homegoing celebration. Um, with a drive through the city of New York and also a funeral with his close friends and family. So again, rest in peace to DMX. Shock G of Digital Underground passed away as well at only 57 years old. Rest in peace to him as well. The judge in the trial for the officer, Brett Hankinson, who shot and murdered Breonna Taylor, pushed back the trial that was scheduled to be on, on August 31st to February 22nd. So now that trial is being pushed six months later. And lastly, Kimberly Elise celebrated her 54th birthday by getting baptized, by going through the process of being baptized. So congratulations to her. And this is your 60 second wrap up. It's now time for the best and the worst dress of the Oscars. Okay, I'm thinking that maybe best dress and worst dress, I'll do like a like a special edition, but for this one, we're gonna put it in this episode. So our contenders are Regina King. Now, as you can see, this dress, 
she looks amazing regina king just has been killing it lately like she just looks like a princess she looks like a fairy princess honestly but it's like very classy and grown in the same way i love the shoulders the the, the shoulders is just it's giving me takeoff you know <laughs> like we are about to take off but it's not too much it's really not too much so i love it i think it's classic i think it looks perfect her hair works for it because um, I feel like if it was too flowy, it would have been too much. And so that short bob worked perfect for her dress. Our next contender is Zendaya and Valentino in this yellow dress. And it looks, it looks beautiful. Zendaya always makes a moment. But this isn't my favorite. This isn't my favorite from her. Um, I feel like she's always looked amazing and always kind of made a statement. But this, and I, I don't know, I didn't feel like a moment from her. Like this was... This was a beautiful dress. She looked beautiful, but it, it's definitely not one of my favorite Zendaya looks. We have Lakeith Stanfield in Saint Laurent, and he looks great. I think that with men, it's really hard to kind of make that moment because most of them just do, you know, the classic white and black suit. But he took this to a different level and he brought out like a 70s type of feel with it. And I love it. I love it. It's definitely its own moment. Her. <laughs> <laughs> I think she looks gorgeous. Like this is great. I'm not always a fan of how hers outfits have come out on the, the red carpet, but this one is definitely one of my favorites. The cape, the hair coming down the side, like she looks amazing. Ugh, the color is stunning, everything about it. She just looks great. Um, this is kind of this is how you come to the Oscars. Now, Andra Day in Vera Wang. She, I love her. <laughs> and she, she did a great job in the United States versus Billie Holiday. It's just not giving what it's supposed to give. Um, yeah, I feel like this is her first, this is her first Oscars, I believe. And I just don't think that, yeah, it, it looks like a party dress. It doesn't look like you're coming to the Oscars type of dress. And so she looks beautiful. She looks stunning, but it's just not my, not my, it's not what I would have picked for her. Um, I feel like the dress is kind of like washing her out as well. It's not really making her pop. So she could have definitely done better with this. Viola Davis, her skin is always was glowing, looking amazing in everything that she wears. I love the top of it. Like the top of it looks great. Um, I love the details. I love the cutout of it. I love how it cinches her breasts, but I hate the bottom. I don't know what I would if I don't know what I would have liked from the bottom, but I just don't like that. <laughs> it, it I don't know. It's giving me very church in that aspect, but it the top is beautiful. It's just the bottom. We could have gone somewhere else with that. So it's not my favorite, but she looks great. And our last two contenders to close this out is Leslie Odom Jr. in Versace and, and Coleman Domingo also in Versace. Now, Leslie Odom Jr., like I said, it's hard for men to kind of stand out and do their own thing in like the same simple black and white suit, but he didn't want to do that. He went with the gold suit. And I don't know if that was the best choice. I know, I know I just said that it's hard, but, and he tried, but I just, I don't like it. I don't know, there's something off about it. Um, I'm feeling like this gold color is kind of washing people out, like Andre Day, it, it kind of washed her out and I feel like it's not popping for him as well yeah it's not popping but his braids look great he looks great it's just the outfit i don't know i don't know there, there's something off about it now with coleman domingo i love this <laughs> he looks great in it um in this pink outfit he looks great in this pink outfit he looks very dapper um i i feel like this is a moment it's definitely popping it's very spring it's fitted i don't know it, it it's giving what it's supposed to give. This one is. <laughs> this one is. Um, those are our contenders. Now, my best dressed and my worst dressed of the award show. My best dress would have to go to her 
I think that she looks great in her outfit. Um, it's not even a dress. It's a two piece, it's not even a dress, which also makes it a statement. And then it gives kind of homage to Prince. And so I love the whole aspect of it. I think she killed it and she looks amazing. My worst dress, I'm so sorry. My worst dress would have to go to Leslie Odom Jr. I'm really sorry. I feel like you, you definitely tried and the gold was different, but it just, it just wasn't there. So I'm expecting to see a lot more from your next award show, but you look great. It's just, it wasn't the moment that I, I, I wanted from that outfit. Um, if you agree, comment down below, who was your best dress and your worst dress? And let's talk about it. Time to almost be done with the show. You're probably like, this? What's so long today? I know. As I always do, we have to end the show on some positivity. And it's not coming from me this week. It is coming from my friend Sheena. She gave a great message on Instagram the other day. And so I wanted her to share that with you guys. So let's take it away, Sheena. Today's message is about letting people go especially for my givers. This is a big one. Sometimes we pour so much of ourselves into others. We give so much of our energy to others and we don't feel that same reciprocation back. We don't get that same energy back. And so what I've learned as a giver is that we have to let people go who are not serving us. If they don't add value to your life, if they're not making your life better, we don't need to remain friends with them. I think we get so caught up sometimes with the fact that we've been friends for so many years and I've known this person for X amount of time. I don't want to hurt their feelings. You know, I don't want them to feel this way. And we end up jeopardizing our own feelings, our own mental health, ourselves in the process. And so I really want to challenge all of my givers to pick yourself, to choose yourself. If you don't feel like someone's adding value to your life, don't invest any energy in them. When I say letting people go, I don't mean don't talk to them ever again. I mean stop investing energy into them. You can still talk to them. You can still wave at them, see them. Y'all can still, you know, talk and have conversations and turn up. And, you know, it can still be love there. It does not, there does not have to be any animosity. But you are not obligated to give to somebody who is not reciprocating and giving to you. So that is my challenge for today. Um, and that is just a message I would like to share with all of you. And this is not just for friendships. This is for relationships. This is for partnerships. This is for familial relationships. If it is not serving you or adding value to your life or making you better, you don't have to hold on to it. Let it go. Jasset, thank you so much for watching What's the Wahala AC. I'll see you guys next week. Don't forget to comment down below so we can continue all the conversations that I've talked about in this episode. And also, don't forget to subscribe. I don't even say that anymore, but please subscribe. You know, if you keep watching my show every week, don't miss out on this. And you can hit a bell so you can be notified when I post, but I post every Thursday. And so be on the lookout for that. And also like this video if you liked it. All right, you guys. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.